Hello guys, me yo. Back with another video on some radio equipment. Uh, this is the uh, video on Maxon SM4450SC. This it's one of my old uh, commercial radios I had in a vehicle long ago. It's no longer legal to use commercially because it's wideband. But what we're going to do is we're going to go in, we're going to see what the frequency is, uh, we're going to check sensitivity with a uh, communications um, signal generator service monitor, and we're going to program it to GMRS, set the power, get it going. Here's the base microphone I have for this model. I, the actual hand mic, uh, the cord is uh, just falling apart, and I didn't want to, you know, have that on the bench with all the plastic coming apart everywhere so we're going to get into this and what you're going to need if you find one of these at a ham sale um, they go by Maxon SM4450 this one I'm going to replace the front it looks like there's a cigarette burn on it uh, this is a UHF model uh, the other branding that these had were General Electric Eric's or Ericsson monogram radios. They are exactly the same radio. So what I'm going to do is pop the top on this. And I'm also going to go in and pop the bottom because I know that this radio is probably going to need to be tuned uh, to match where I'm going to be programming it. But for right now, we're just going to plug it in and program it. And to program it, you're going to need a couple of things. Main thing you're going to need is the SPC4000 Maxon monogram cable. This cable here. This plugs into the radio. Uh, the white bit goes right here on LK10. This white strip plug. The red part, the red wire, you're going to pull off. There's a board here, a daughter board. It's an audio uh, relay circuit. Pull it off, put it aside because you're going to have to put that back. And put that on the first pin closest to the metal cage right here. This is the VCO under here. Um, I don't know if VCO is going to go out of lock when I reprogram this. Um, anyway, another thing you're going to need is you're going to need that software. The SMP 4004C. There are websites you can get that. You'll also need an old computer. Um, that is capable of running DOS straight or a DOS mode, legit DOS mode like Windows 98. Uh, you can't run this in XP or anything like that. I wouldn't recommend even trying unless you want to brick the radio ZPROM or do some weird things. And another thing I recommend you get is a cable that will convert the 9 pin RS-232 to a 25 pin because this is a 25 pin cable. Okay, that'll plug in like so. That'll go over there. Now, we get in programming mode. We all make sure to connect it to power. 12 volts DC. At least 15 amps, I would think. Uh, mash the P, turn it on, and you should see that on the scheme. screen. P-R-O-G flashing. And with that, we're going to look here, and we're going to read the radio. And that's the frequency that is currently in the radio, 452.125. Now, it should have been a repeater, but I think this was used as a monitoring station or something. I can't remember. This radio is a commercial license that I have. I still have this license. I just can't use this radio. I may have reprogrammed it to simplex. I don't know. But what we're going to do, since it's set to 452, I'm going to set service monitor. Okay, there's the monitor. 452125. I ain't worried about a tone. Modulations looking okay. Uh, frequency error is centered. And we're going to give it about a millivolt to start. And we'll see where it goes. Okay, look down, turn it on. Well, we got to unplug it. And to do this, turn it off this board back in <coughs> back on and you can hear the the deal there wow. alright so this radio all the way down to 
So that was up here at one mark one millivolt. All right, it's three microvolts, one microvolt, 0.3 microvolts, and we'll run the fine down. I think my squirt is actually too hot. Okay. I have to set the squelch on the radio. And we're going to run this fine down as two tenths or a microvolt. So at about one and three quarter tenths of a microvolt, it will open up the squelch if the squelch is set right on the threshold. We will turn down the off. Now? <coughs> okay, that went all the way. For some reason. So Jen is off. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we'll go back in. Oh no. Nope. Pull this back out. I'm not gonna put GMRS channel one. Actually, there's eight channels. Six two five. I'm gonna put kind of in the middle of the GMRS band. Uh, it would be four sixty two six three seven five is an FRS channel. I'm not transmitting on that. I do have this isolated and dummy lock, but I'm going to put that as a center frequency and I'm going to center this radio on 6375. Oh, too many periods. Uh, again, I'm not transmitting on this frequency. Not now, anyway. I, I, the transmitter is not going to really need any alignment. Um, it's mainly receiving purposes here. So, if you have these radios, don't put the FRS channels in these and transmit, please. Um, <laughs> that's not legal. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, it's not legal. I'm doing it for receiving purposes. There's the frequency I put in. And we're going to program this radio. Put it in, turn it on in program mode. And program, program, program. And that should be it. Okay, now turn it off. Unplug it, unplug it. We'll put the little board back in. When I do check the power later, I'll check the power on the GMRS frequency. I will we'll change this program over. But right now, I'm going to center the uh, six, three, seven, five. Setting the service monitor to four six two six three seven five. <coughs> Turn this on. that far off it could, it could stand a little a little fine tuning oh yeah we'd stand a little bit all right so I'm gonna try to clean it up a little Let me 
reset the score threshold. Okay, we're at three tenths still. Mainly these first two are the ones you want to pay attention to. It's like it's shorter down there. So we're back all the way down, all the way up here. Three tenths, two tenths, and one and a half tenths. Oh, microvolt. So that's a pretty good receiver. I don't know why that. <laughs> Let this got rattled here and it Oh no, it's the center slug that seems okay. Yeah, the center Okay, well that's can fix that that's put a new one in there but well, I'm not trying to fix this one up for use really I'm just walking you through how to tune it oh yeah start at this end work your way up if you got a service monitor you know I'm using a Cushman CE 50A which is probably as old as I am um, but it is calibrated and, you know, good to go. Oh, I can transmit it this way. It does have a dummy load in it. Okay. It says 100 watts max. Anyway, we're going to go flipping back over. This isn't the only radio like this I have. I just picked one out of the pile and I would find one with a bad can. But it should give you an idea of how to do this, how to program, uh, how to, you know, get this working for GMRS, which they're just perfectly fine for. These are 40 watt radios. They will do 50 watts. I don't recommend doing 50 watts here. But do what you want, you know. And. Uh, 
you know, you're gonna do what you want. So I'm gonna do that 462.55. I'm gonna put 141.3, which is the uh, GMR's travel tone, and uh, 467.55. So I'm going to list that out in the first eight. And the last eight are going to be simplex. So I'm going to go in and punch all that in, get a scan list set up, and I'll be right back. And we're back. I've got the program list in. The first eight frequencies are the repeater pairs, 462, uh, 467 being input, transmit, and 462, 725 being received. The last are just direct with no tone uh, reasons I set scan on the first eight I don't want scan down here on these no tones because it'd be hanging up on everything every little walkie-talkie and everything else around I have a 90 second timeout timer transmit delay is off busy channel lockout off mark idle off no priority channel no loop back time scan list is set and you can see over here uh, scan delay two seconds scan weight disabled and I'm going to program the radio and I need to put the radio in programming mode first hold down P turn on the power it's now on in programming mode press any key let's do this again radio is programmed we'll do it one more time for good measure and good now we will move on to check in the power which make sure you put this board back in it's real easy to forget this if you don't put this board back in you'll get an error on the screen I think it's error three or something it pops up on the screen so now we'll unhook this the service monitor. I, I could use the service monitor to check power, but I'm not going to. I'm not doing that. And I'm going to plug this into a watt meter dummy load here. I got a little dummy load on. I don't think it's rated for the power, so I won't transmit long. And I'm going to use this base station microphone that's made for Maxon radios. And I've got it on its back, and there's a reason for that. The power adjust potentiometer is down in this hole here. It's RV2. It's down in there. You probably, you're not going to be able to see it on the camera. Well, maybe. I can try to show it to you. It's that little white where the gray wire loops up. It's, it's that little white thing right there. That's the, uh, that's the transmitter power adjust. But we want to see... What are we, are we even transmitting? Okay, my my meter, my watt meter gets stuck sometimes. Okay, so I'll put the watt meter here. I'll put the mic here. You can see that I am transmitting. It's about 45 watts. So I'm going to see what this radio will do in the form of power, if I can make the right screwdriver go. I had another screwdriver here that I could adjust this with, and now I can't find it, of course. It was just here, now it's disappeared. can't turn it with this one it's too small where did that thing go I just had this tool in my hand that's an awful well it was here now it's gone I, I apologize my house has a black hole living under it and if I leave anything unattended for a period of time it just gets sucked in and this screwdriver is liable to end up at the neighbor's house or something in a week you know it just it's one of those 
What is this? Can I do I could probably do it with this one. This isn't what I was looking. Yeah, that'll work. It's not what I was looking for. Alright, so we'll go as low as 10 watts and he'll go up to about 45 watts. That's what it's looking like. And my meter is doing that thing again that it does. There it goes. I gotta get this meter worked on it. So I'm gonna set this radio at about 40 watts and call it good. I gotta get this meter serviced. The uh, movement sticks and I gotta kind of bump it, make it come back up. So anyway, we're gonna put the back back on it. And call it okay, I guess. Okay. And that's how you uh, tune the radio, that's how you program the radio, and how you adjust the power on these Maxon 4000s. These radios here are pretty much old and tired. I don't know if this one's going to be worth fixing since I have a pile of these. I got about 60 more of these here. There's a bunch of them. But I don't know if it's going to be worth fixing that receiver can or not. I might. I don't know. This goes to say I might not even worry about this either. Somebody cigarette burned it. We dial in on that. The cigarette burn. <laughs> oh, yummy. And all the crust. This This was in a... I forgot where this came from. It didn't come out of my vehicle because I didn't smoke in my vehicle. So it might have been in someone else's. I, I can't remember. I just say it is because I know the frequency that's in it is one that we're licensed on. So anyway, Maxon SM40000 series. The same alignment holds true for the VHF high band radios. The 2, the 2150 or I can't remember, 2250 maybe. I can't remember the exact number. Same programming procedures and all that are the same. Just a different band. One thing that these radios do not like, I mean, they'll program and they will work to some extent in the amateur radio band, but they don't really like it. Um, I've seen some of these radios where the PLL would not lock down at all in 440 or two meters. And then in some cases, the receiver just isn't sensitive enough, like I like it, to work on those lower frequencies. They, they just weren't really designed for that. I mean, you can put them there, and if you're working repeaters that are in town or close to you, they, they should be fine. Uh, you'll have to align the PLL, um, and that's done in that area up here next to that audio board you have a test point and an adjustment you take that thing out that board i can show you you will take off this cover here and you'll need a voltmeter because if you program it like say i program this to 444 at one or whatever for a repeater here, it's going to give me an error one, I think is the error code or something. PLL is out of lock. Beep, 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 you know, beep, you know, actually keep beeping at you. Well, you take this off because you don't want to try to you get in there. Put four screws out, one, two, three, four, pull it off. And there's a variable capacitor and a test point, and you want to use voltmeter ground one to the side and put the other probe the positive there and adjust that and when it stops beeping your voltage should start your voltage should go up as you adjust it and quit beeping and same for the transmit side you'll have to adjust it again for the transmitter there is a procedure if you have the book for these radios the procedure is in that book now, this particular radio here is I, something's wrong with it. I might take the faceplate off this and put somewhere else. It's got a nice case. 
cover on it. But, but yeah, nine times out of ten, you're going to have to readjust the PLL if you find one of these at a ham fest or on eBay or somewhere and you get it, it'll probably more or less have a commercial frequency in it of 461 or 452 or, you know, something, a commercial channel, and you'll need to reprogram it. And then PLL adjustment and service monitor, adjust the receiver cans, get it back into alignment to receive and I think the best that I was able to get one of these on the amateur band in 440 was I think about three and a half tenths of a microvolt to open up. That's okay for nearby repeaters, high powered repeaters, but if you're going to try to de-hex, it's no good. You want two tenths or better for that. So, and these radios do if you got a pair of them they're pretty I made a video on making a repeater out of these and they're pretty good for that for GMRS or ham or whatever if you can get the receiver to receive the ham frequencies you know adequately if not you'll have to put a preamp behind it to get it you know really pull it in but yeah there's a video on how to make a repeater out of these how to connect them you do need a controller this does, I believe, have a positive core. Core goes high out of these, not low, like a Motorola. And yeah, um, that's all I can say on these. But they are, they're good for like your base station, GMRS, if you want them in your car. They are of the legal power. They are wideband, and wideband is still allowed in GMRS. And I do believe these have part 95 uh, approval by the FCC as well so so I'm going to leave you guys with that I'm Elf Net Gaming uh, be sure to like and subscribe leave a comment below thumbs up the video if you liked it or learned anything um, and I will make more on different radios in the future I have some other stuff I need to look at some portables and some mobiles and some other things but for now, I'm going to leave you with this, and I will see you in the next video.